All right, so we've got a 2007 Yamaha Jet Drive. It's an AR230. So this video will be how to overhaul the Jet Drive, replace the bearings, uh, reseal this. So there are slots in here on either side of the cone. You just put a screwdriver in here and twist a little bit. You can pop the cone off. And the reason we're going after this is because of that. Um, we do have uh, failed seals and we have water in the grease. Now to remove the shaft from this housing, I'm not changing the impeller. So all I want to do is pull the shaft through the housing to get at the bearings and the seals. So to do this, I'm going to hold back on the impeller with an inch and a 16th wrench. And we use an impact on the impeller nut at seven eighths. The way I'm doing this, as I loosen it, I'm not affecting the tightness of the impeller. But when I go to retighten this, I'm actually going to hold back on the spline end of the shaft because I don't want to uh, change position of the impeller or loosen that. Um, I just don't have that tool right yet. Wasn't that easy? We have a nut and then we have a washer. I'm cleaning these up and organizing. So I'm actually doing both of the drives on this unit. On top, I'm gonna use the socket on top of the shaft. I need to press this through down. And then in my position, I need to be able to hold back and catch that shaft as, I, as that falls down. All right, so now we have the shaft out. This is what pressed out. We went this way and we have a bearing fit here and a bearing fit here. So you can see these are two different diameters. So now I'm left with two oil seals, a bearing, and then another bearing on the other side. So I'm gonna start by removing this bearing, which is the larger diameter. To do that, I need to press it from this side or pull it from this side. <clears throat> okay, so now I've got that bearing out and I need to take the other one and I need to send it the same way. Notice that when I took the bottom bearing out, I also got the sleeve. This sits between the two bearings so that when you install them, they're actually, this is actually contacting the raceway of both bearings, holding those tight. So I'll clean this up. You can see my parts arrangement over here. This is from the other uh, unit that I just took apart. On this one, I'm gonna use a socket again. You can see what I'm doing here. I can just barely see <clears throat> the inside of the race. So if I put this in here, it clears the seals and I sit on the race and I push these out. This is definitely not how you install bearings on, on ins installation. We need to press on the outside of the race, not the inside, because you'll damage the bearings. But I'm taking these out, I'm not gonna reuse them, so I'm just doing what I'm doing here, because it's gonna work. All right, so now we're left with the two oil seals to remove. So I've got a socket that fits the ID of the second oil seal. I'm gonna push both of these out together. Here's the first one. And there's the second one. All right, so now it comes down to part cleanup. I need to Carefully clean the aluminum, get all the corrosion off of the register fit on both sides, clean out the intake screen, and then when my parts come in, 
I'll load in two new bearings. I'm gonna reuse the spacer. I'm gonna reuse the nut and the washer. I'll reuse the nose cone, but I'll put a new O-ring on that and then pack it with grease. All right, so back to assembly. Now the kit comes with two bearings. You can see, pretty simple. One bearing has a larger inner race than the other. And on our shaft, we've got a larger journal here and a smaller journal there. So the first bearing in will be the larger diameter that'll drop in. And then my lap, then I'll put the sleeve on and then we'll put the smaller bearing in. All right, so I'm gonna start with the bottom bearing, right? So that's the bigger diameter and that's gonna go inside the bore here. And I'm gonna use a socket, again, that has ample clearance to the sides. I'll drive that in and then as I run out of space, I'll use another socket as a spacer until the bottom bearing is snug. Before I put the bearings in, I'm gonna add a little bit of the uh, Yamaha jet pump grease. So I'm just gonna put this into the bearing as such. Normally I hand pack bearings, you know, for cars and things. This grease is pretty thin now, it's pretty runny. It's not that thick, a little sticky. So I'm just gonna do both sides like this. All right, so now we've got our bottom bearing in. This is the sleeve. I do need to clean this up a little bit. Got some grease on the inside. So this will go in. I'm gonna add a little bit of grease to the outside of this. bearing. <clears throat> Again, I'm going to add grease to these. Load this up, kind of pumping it in between the rollers. And then flip it. Now I'll press this one in. So the next step is to put our oil seals in, but before I do that, I'm gonna add grease right through here. So I have grease on either side of the balls. I'm gonna fill that up through the diameter of the larger ID bearing. So I'm just gonna shoot this right in the bottom here. You can kind of see what I'm doing. I'm just gonna roll this. So I get ample grease inside there. And then in my case, I don't want all this to come out when I put the shaft in. So I'm just gonna take a little scale and kind of level this out. Don't have to do it, but I'm gonna try to minimize how much grease comes out of this when I put the shaft in. So we'll see if this helps me. All right. Now that I've got that done, 
We're gonna put our two grease seals in. The cups face each other. Yeah, actually skinny seal goes on first. Let's see here. All right, so we've got seals installed and we're ready for the shift. Now I looked at a couple different ways to press this in, and one of the ways is that this sits on the or this sits on the bed of the press, and then I push down from the spline end, and I wasn't super keen on that because you do have the ability to bend the shaft. So as a check, as a check, the bearings that actually came out of the pump fit this shaft pretty good, and they run right up on the impeller. So. I'm not putting a ton of force on here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this be the bed of my press. And I'm going to push this down because I only have a small amount of distance to travel to pull the shaft through the housing. And this will minimize any chances of me bending that shaft. So as you can see, that actually worked like a champ. So you can see what I'm doing. My socket is actually going right here. So the shaft goes up through the socket. See that? All right, let's try this again. Last one. So this time, I'll let you see what we're actually doing here. Okay. So as I press this, you're gonna see that the housing is going over the shaft. We're holding ourselves on that bearing. Until I'm tight. <clears throat> so on the grease cup, on the nose cone here, just pull this O-ring out, trash that, clean all your joints up really good. I use a little scotch brite for that. It's interesting because on Sea-Doo's, this is plastic. But on this Yamaha, this is aluminum. So when it comes to this, the manual says to fill this up about a third. This is like a grease reserve. And on sea I just kind of pile it in there, so. I'm not gonna go easy on that. I'm gonna go about two thirds. Now at the beginning, I said I was using an impact because I didn't have the right tool yet. This is the nut, spline nut that goes over the ends of the splines on the drive shaft. So when I tighten this nut, I'm gonna hold back using this tool. So we're gonna to torque this to 53 foot pounds. That's in the manual. I'm gonna do that by installing our spline tool here. All right, it's a little awkward to do. So instead of doing it this way, I'm gonna use my vise. There's drive one. Now I'll move over to drive two. This one's already torqued. I'm gonna to set that to the side. I'm starting to lose a little space out here in the garage. 
All right. So important to note, the washer that you're gonna use is round on one side and flat on the other. We're gonna put the flat side to the bearing because that's a machine surface. That's the way it should be. And I gotta spin this guy on and we'll torque this. All right, before I put the cone back on, I'm gonna fill that end with some grease as well. Got one nose cone ready to go. I'm gonna put a little Loctite on these screws. The torque on these is click. All right, we are done. We've got two nice and smooth jet pumps, new seals, bearings. So we're gonna drop these in and see how it runs. It is interesting to note that the pitch on this side is different from this side. This has a steeper pitch. I think it has to do with, uh, with hull design. We are gonna be putting new props, new impellers on these at some point soon. Look at the cavitation on this one and there's none on the other one, which is pretty interesting because I couldn't find anything to explain that, but the pitch is steeper. So I don't know, maybe, maybe some of you have some answers on why they do this and uh, what the reasoning is, and maybe there's a, a problem with cavitation on one versus the other. The one with the steeper pitch has a different part number. It's a GP610, and then the other one is a GP600. So this is factory 2007.